Hi, I'm Henry Segerman. Hi, I'm Saul Schleimer. This is our exhibition illustrating geometry. We're going to just start with a quick walkthrough, show you everything. And then we'll do uh, a little bit of extra on the new pieces. So we have these, uh, these big colorful posters for the seven different uh, themes that we follow. So stereographic projection, polytopes, quintessence. Then we've got minimal surfaces in green, cyphered surfaces in blue, fractal surfaces in darker blue, and mechanisms at the end. In purple. In purple. So we've got some quintessence here. We've got uh, bigger pieces. It's a big half 120 cell here. And there's a giant round Mobius man twist hanging from the ceiling. Thanks to George Hart for the loan of his disco ball motor. And for his help with the dyeing process. And some new cyphered surfaces here. Very large twisted earth. In the background you can see the largest piece in the show, which is a fractal surface, the tear dragon curve at the bottom, which you can see in the mirror. And the very next to it are two other fractal surfaces. And then over here we've got triple gear. And should we do Hellerman Ferguson? Let's do Hellerman Ferguson. Sure. So uh, Tony Phillips kindly loaned us his Hellerman Ferguson piece, which is the umbilic rolling link. And if you grab it and just kind of rotate it, then you can get it to go. Maybe the other direction is better. You want to try it with the other one? So one fact about this sculpture is that the two pieces have a 3-1 and a 1-3 torus knot on them. So they gear in a ratio of 3 to 1. So as I move the big piece at speed 1, the spiky piece moves at speed 3. So if I reverse, and I really try and go as fast as I can, without dropping it of course, then you can see that the bulging out piece is barely moving, or moving very slowly. Let's put uh -huh. that down. <laughs> very it's very heavy. heavy. Let's do Oscar as well, since we're here. So here is Oscar van de Venter's piece. Uh, it's two uh, interlinking knots. There's a trefoil knot and there's a anti-trefoil knot. This is like the 3-2, this is the 2-3, and they gear in a ratio of 3 to 2. So if I just move this, then the other one moves. So that's not going very fast, so let's try the other way. Hopefully that'll go faster. And indeed, that moves quite a bit faster as we rotate. Cool. So here we're looking at the 24 cell, which we've seen before, but now it's colored. Each edge is colored with one of four colors, yellow, red, green, and blue. And the rule is, you look at the edge, and it's going in a particular direction in the three sphere. And that gives you a quaternion, and that quaternion tells you which of the four colors to use. And it's the same thing over here with the half 48 cell, except that there's a bunch more colors. And it's not the same thing for the dual half 120 and 600 cells, here it's just the 600 cells in red and the 120 cells in blue. These are a very large version of the quintessence puzzles. And uh, they're very satisfyingly large. They fit together really nicely. Here's a, another copy of the round Klein bottle. And what's new about this guy is the coloring. If you pick any point of it, not on a corner, and you look at the normal vector, then you can transport that to the origin S3, and you'll get a point in the unit tangent sphere there. That sphere, we stick inside the red, green, blue cube, and we get a color. Notice that vectors which are 90 degrees off of each other have very different colors. Now here's something really cool. There's lots of circles in this sculpture. Here's one of them, and it's colored green. And if you follow that circle around, the circle twists, and the transport to the origin and three sphere means that the color stays the same. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab this guy, I'm gonna pick it up, and I'm gonna show you the other side. So on the opposite of green, 
is this red circle right here. And the again, the color is constant. And in the background of the round Klein bottle, we see the round Mobius band. So here's a copy of the Clifford torus. And again, the thing that's new is the coloring. Again, we have the same property that we take the normal vector and we transport that to the origin in S3 to get the color. Notice that if we follow a 1, 1 curve, then it's always blue. Well, it's always a constant color. Different 1, 1 curves have different color. If we follow a minus 1, 1 curve, the color changes. That's because the hop vibration has two handednesses, right and left, and the colors are being done according to, say, the right-handed hop vibration. So here we have the knotted cog, and this is also colored. And the coloring scheme is by the color wheel, and we follow the parameterization of the trefoil knot. So when we go around 180 degrees from each other, we see complementary colors. So here's a version of the 3-3 ciphered surface. And what's new about this, aside from the lovely color, is the fact that we've thickened it using the elliptic flow. To explain the elliptic flow, we have another copy, the 3-3 ciphered surface with fibers. And these fibers, you can see, are all round circles, and they're all transverse to the ciphered surface, and the other copies of the ciphered surface that fill up the three-sphere. This is a very large version of the Tur dragon curve. And the new thing here is that we should have mirrors underneath these hanging pieces, particularly this one, so you can see the awesome structure underneath. So on this pedestal, we have a couple of colored copies of the triple helix and the bromian racks and one more copy of the triple gear. Thanks for watching.